Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Hey guys, Amber here with the Meeple family, and today I am going to be looking at Framework. This is one of the newest Uwe Rosenberg games to hit the market, and I'm really excited to head down to the table and show you how this plays. As always, at the end of the video, I'll give you my review on how I enjoyed Framework. So Framework can play anywhere from one to four players. To start the game, each player will choose a color, orange, green, yellow, or brown, and take all 22 tokens in their preferred color. For this how to play, we're just gonna use orange and green and set up a two player game. Framework also comes with this great draw bag, which you can store all 120 frame tiles in. Now, before we get too far into how the game plays, let's go ahead and look at the different tiles and tasks we are going to run across in Framework. Now in Framework, there are five different color frames, silver, red, brown, yellow, and green. Each tile may display a different amount of frames. For instance, this has zero frames all the way to three frames. Now let's look at these tiles. As we previously looked at the different types of frames, we're also gonna see that different tiles will display different tasks. Each task consists of a number and a color. For example, this task tells us that we need to have three green adjacent tiles to this tile in order to score this task. So the color and number will dictate how to complete each task. Some tiles will have no task, while other tiles may have up to three you can choose from. So let's quickly break down the different tasks we're gonna encounter in Framework. Each of the tasks on this tile requires at least as many horizontally and or vertically adjacent frames in the corresponding color as indicated on the tile. There's no order that these tasks must be completed in, and you don't have to complete all of them. You can pick and choose which ones you'd like to complete. So for this example, let's say I wanted to complete the four brown task. That may look something like this. You can see here, I have one, two, three, four brown frames connected to this task tile. Once I complete a task, I can put my score token color over that task. And remember, the first person to play all their score tokens wins the game. In a subsequent round, I may be able to fulfill other tasks on this tile. Here, in this scenario, I have one, two, three, four, five red frames. So that means I can cover up that task as well. Now let's look at this task type. This task requires a combination of the colors shown on the task. So for this example, I would need a combination of green and silver to complete any of these tasks. So that may look something like this. You can see in this example, I have a combination of three green and three silver. That's gonna allow me to put a score token on the sixth task. As I add to these frames, I may be able to cover up the nine and 12 later. Now let's review this task type. You can see this task has a dark slash through the middle of it. That means means we have to choose one or the other. So we either need to have three yellow frames or three red frames. Completing this task may look something like this because we have one, two, three red frames. Now the last type of task we need to look at requires that you first do what's on the left side before you fulfill the right side. So for this example, I need to first attach four green frames before I can score any adjacent silver frames. So let's look at this example here. As we said, we need four green frames attached before we can unlock the three silver frames. I already have three actually four silver frames attached to this tile, but I only have three green frames. So once I attach another green frame, that allows me to use two tokens, because now I can cover up the four as well as the three. So now that we've taken time to look over all the tiles, how the frames and the colors and the different tasks work, let's go into gameplay. So as we stated in the beginning, each player is going to have 22 score tokens. And in order to win, you need to be the first one to place all of your score tokens. Tokens. The more you can combo your tiles together, the quicker you're gonna be able to play these score tokens. So let's go into how the turns work. Whoever you decide to go first will take the bag and they will draw a certain number of tiles 
to put into the offer. You will always draw one more tile than there are players playing. So for our scenario, in a two player game, we would draw three tiles. Let's go ahead and say the green player is going first. They will go ahead and take one tile from the offer. They're going to want to place it into their display area. Next, orange is going to pick a tile that they would like in their display area. Since green drew the offer, they will take the last tile and have to immediately place it into their display. Now when it comes to placing tiles, you can place them vertically or horizontally to another tile in your display. You cannot ever add a tile diagonally. It has to be attached on a full side. After green has placed their second tile, the bag will be passed to the next player. Then they will draw three new tiles for the offering. Remember, the player that lays the offering gets to select their tile first. Now we can see here that the orange player was able to fulfill the task that requires two yellow frames. Once they've done this, they can immediately cover up that task with one of their colored score tokens. Now turns will take place just like that until one of the players has used up all of their score tokens. When this happens, the game is over and the winner is declared. Now if you know anything about me, you know I love a game that offers a solo variant, and Framework does, so let's take a look at how that plays now. For the solo variant of Framework, you only need to select your preferred color of score tokens. Make sure you grab all 22. Framework also comes with a tile task overview card, and on the back side is a component you're going to need for the solo game called the storage card. When playing the solo variant of Framework, you're going to draw one tile at a time. You can decide to play this tile in your display or house it on the storage card. If you really want a challenging game, you can remove the storage card from the game completely. But if it's your first game, you may want to try it with the storage card. So in the solo variant, you'll keep drawing one tile at a time or deciding whether to place one of your stored tiles from a previous turn. Now when it comes to the solo objective, you want to try to create a 5x5 five five grid. Anything outside of your 5x5 five five grid will be negative points. So in this example, I would have scored negative eight because here is my five by five grid. And like I said, anything on the outside will be negative. And that is how the solo variant works in Framework. Well, thank you so much for joining me at the table as I gave you a quick crash course in how the game Framework plays. So let's first look at the components of the game. This really just comes with these tiles, which are classic game board tiles. You are also going to get the drawstring bag for drawing your tiles out of. And then you have these lovely little score tokens. Now these score tokens and I have been butting heads because they are circular and they are very hard to keep on your table. That is why I highly recommend you have some kind of game tray storage bowl or something to put them in because the fact that they made them round just means that if they do get turned over on their round edge versus their flat side, they're gonna roll all over the place. So that was a little bit frustrating. I'm not sure why they went with a cylinder shape, but easily remedied if you have some kind of a dish you can put them in, no big deal. The gameplay for this is super easy. Uh, is there strategy involved? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, it's whoever can place their point tokens as quickly as possible. So that is who's going to win the game. So yes, you're trying to be strategic, but it also depends on what tiles come up and just trying to use them to the best of your ability to make combos and to get your display to start churning out points. Speaking of combos, that is something I really enjoy about Framework. Once you grow a certain color or a couple colors within your display, it's so nice to get these scoring tiles. You can just tack them onto those colors and easily uh, use up your score tokens. So I really enjoy that uh, uh, part of the gameplay. It's really fun to get those combo effects where they all start kind of ricocheting off each other. The other thing I really like about the gameplay is, you know, that first person who puts out the uh, tiles, they get stuck with the last tile that's left. So each round that you put out tiles, you do get two tiles. You're gonna get the first pick, which is usually one you really want. And then there's one that you're like, oh, I hope that one doesn't come around to me. And sure enough, you are stuck with it and you have to place it in your display. That is a really fun uh, component of the game. And it 
it's fun when you know that you're, you know, sticking someone with a tile that they really don't want in their display. This game is definitely a lightweight family game. It's probably one of Uwe Rosenberg's lightest games, in my opinion, and all of my kids, even my six-year-old, can tackle this game. Even though strategically he may not be on the same level as us, he is able to place tiles and feel like he is a part of the game. So this is a really fun family game because I feel like everyone can come to the table and feel like they're a part of it. Now, as far as the solo variant of the game, I have had a chance to play that several times. I love that it's very quick, it's very fast because you're just drawing one tile, you're deciding whether to place it or store it. Now with the solo variant, uh, it is much more thinky and puzzly because you're trying to keep your display as condensed as possible and it's not so much about racing to get out of your score trackers as it is about you know keeping that display five by five because anything outside of that is going to get you those negative points i think the lowest score i was able to achieve was negative six so if you guys have gotten a chance to play this let me know what your solo score was because i have no idea if that was good or uh, you know, decent, or if it was a terrible score, but it was fun. Now, I personally enjoy the multiplayer better because I like the feeling of not um, having to stay within that five by five boundary. I like that when I feel I want to you know, make my display go further out of that, I can, and I like that in the multiplayer version. Well, as you can guess, this is definitely a game that our family really enjoyed, and I have gotten the solo out several times to play as well. It is just a fun, relaxed, filler, easy, lightweight game. Um, those easy to teach, easy to learn games are usually the ones that hit our table the most. Well, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and if you would, subscribe and give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you later. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes